All right, so we've been over part one and part two of data log review. Now I wanted to show you how to use the comparison tool in data logs, and then I'll do another follow-up video showing you the comparison tools in the uh, EFI software as opposed to a data log. So I figured I would start from just here we are in our global file. We're going to go to data log, open data log. We're going to open up um, pass three, which is the last pass that we made uh, with my car. And then we're going to, this is what we were just looking at for that, that uh, those two previous videos. But we want to bring up a comparison, right? So we want to look at pass three versus pass two. Where did we do better? Where did we do worse? Yada, yada. So you click right here and open up comparison data log. And we're going to open up pass two. Hit open. All right. So this doesn't make too much sense right now because they're not sitting on top of each other. So like I showed you in the previous video where we automatically set the zero time for the first data log, the main data log, which is the non-dotted version, we need to set the zero time for the comparison. So we click ZCA when boost time is greater than 0.00, .00 which is the same. And now they sit on top of each other. So like I showed you before, left click, hold, zoom. Let's look at the log. and um, now we've got a comparison between both logs, right? So we can look at what, which one ran better, which, uh, you know, did our adjustments make a difference wherever we were at in the, on the racetrack. So again, our zero time is at 0.00. .00. That's the release of the button. Uh, of course, the car doesn't start to move. And if we look, let's get rid of some of this stuff. If we look at, Right here, there's the release of the button. We go out to here, and that's where the car starts to actually move. It didn't even break the beams yet, but that's where it starts to move. So, pass two, uh, for easy numbers, let's just say it went uh, 120, 60 foot, right? And pass three, let's say it went 112, 60 foot. So, we know that pass two took the 8.7 pounds of boost on the starting line, and it took the uh, you know 4,200 RPM rev limiter, right? Um, so maybe we decide that we want to leave on a little bit more boost. My first move when when tuning a turbo car is always to just leave on a little bit more boost. If it takes it, uh, you know, if it continues to take more boost, we're going to follow the curve a little bit better. So we uh, we look at the G meter here and. You can see where the G meter starts to climb. So pass three is, which is our faster pass is the solid line and the slower pass is the dotted line. And we notice that the G meter stays very little bit ahead. We're looking down here, by the way. So it's staying a little bit ahead. When I say ahead, I mean higher, right? It's, uh, it's staying higher, it's holding G higher. It's still pretty soft. Um, G meter is, fantastic tuning tool and again like i've said previously i prefer the vps uh, and here's a shameless plug for our business if you want to buy a vps mm -hmm. go to hcrinnovations.com and buy a vps and uh and buying from us will also provide you with the support that uh you may need for um you know setting it up tuning it blah 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 or just watching other videos on it you know, whatever you want to do so um, see that the G meter is a little bit higher everywhere, right? So X axis is our, you know, front to back acceleration and we are accelerating higher. So if we pull up drive shaft speed, notice the drive shaft speed is also ahead, right? So drive shaft speed is running ahead, which if I had turned the profiler on, I would have had to adjust my profiler in order to uh compensate for the drive shaft speed running ahead of the uh of the previous run so what changed here right so we put more boost in the engine so let's bring up boost so you can see we put more boost in the engine uh and we also put boost in faster right and uh, we we don't have a ton more boost but we got three more pounds of boost here at uh you know, 1.2 into the run, which is what our theoretical 60 foot was on pass number two. Um, 
but it followed the curve or it, it the whole curve is higher right so all along the way we started with 1.5 pounds of 1.4 pounds of boost more of the release of the button uh, and we continued that trend of running two to three pounds of boost higher than the previous run so something you could do here if you feel like the track's going to hold no matter what you do from one five on right let's just look at one five and below right so let's just zoom in look at one five and below come over here to your your um your global file click on boost versus time and now this yellow dot is telling us where we are on that data log so something i'm going to show you how how to do you probably already know how to do it but um it makes life a little bit easier if you minimize this and you minimize this you have two half windows the left click hold and throw it off to the side and then click here now you've got split screen action right so as we are i'm using the, uh, the arrow keys right but as we are rolling through this we are climbing our boost curve right you see how it's climbing out there and it's the time here is matching the time here right uh so what we can do is we can look at this log and we can say you know what i feel like uh past two was a you know the theoretical 120 60 foot past three was the theoretical 115 or 110 uh we want to try to go 105 we think the track's going to take it what do we do well we need to put more boost in the motor so hopefully you were uh smart enough to know that you should be doing this at the racetrack and not at um or doing this at home and not at the racetrack but hopefully you understand that how much boost it'll make on the trans brake uh you know before you let go of the button with however much dome pressure so we can look at that so we know okay we want to hit this thing with more boost on the starting line to get this car to accelerate uh more rapidly in the 60 foot so if this was a nitrous combination you would be overlaying this to your progressive right you would be looking at this this area with your progressive if this was a procharged combination you would be looking at this with your timing retards because your pro charger well with your leave rpm and your timing retards your pro charger makes x amount of boost at x rpm so uh there's no real variables besides weather that uh are going to make you know the, the big difference here you know what i mean so the the idea here is is that we want to leave on a little bit more boost so we look back here while we're on the trans brake we go to boost setup and we've got nine pounds of dome pressure in it right so notice we had seven pounds of dome pressure in the first run and then nine pounds in the second run and again the solid line is the second well it's actually the third run but we're looking at it at this so it's the second run um so we've got 10 pounds of boost on the trans brake here and 8.6 pounds of boost on the trans brake here with seven pounds of dome pressure so my car likes to trend right around one pound of boost more than whatever i have in my launch target so if we wanted to bump that up we would bump this up from nine to say uh, 11. and then the next move is going to have to be we've got to look at boost versus time we don't want to leave on 11 pounds of dome pressure drop back down to 10 and then start to accelerate because like we reviewed in part one of this video series is that the engine and the turbo have to actually respond to the uh, commands that you're asking of it so we want to get the boost into this engine faster so let's take this 10 and uh and let's move this to say 13. okay now if we just wanted to run the same peak boost the same ramp and the same um you know linearization across this ramp we could just left click hold drag highlight these cells right click and fill row values and now we've got a linear boost curve that starts up higher so with that said the easy way to spot check this is we can bring up oh we gotta go to a different let's go to a different uh different uh view so we'll go to boost tuning because that's what we're doing is we're tuning boost and we look at our target right so let's get rid of boost and let's just look at our target so there's our target nine pounds on the brake seven pounds on the brake for run number two instead of run number three and we let go and our target boost is starting to climb right so where we had 10 pounds before we're now in the 13 psi zone right so we're three pounds of dome pressure ahead we can continue to scroll and just spot check what we got target boost on this last run 
that went a theoretical 110 uh, or 115, whatever the hell the number is, was 10.9 pounds of boost. Now we're here in between 13 and 14 and a half, so we're right around 13.8. So now we're three pounds of boost ahead, right? 11.0, we're getting closer to that 14.5. We're staying three pounds of boost ahead the whole run. The reason we're staying three pounds of boost ahead the whole run is because we changed this from 10 to 13, and we made it a continued linear transition. So obviously, the closer we get to the end of this transition, we're not going to have that three pounds of boost increase. It's going to still level off at that same dome pressure. So if you're unsure of your combination or if you're new to tuning a turbo car, the next move would be we know that at 1.5 and up, the, the, the track will take what we're putting to it, right? So maybe we want to increase these values here to 28. So we add three more pounds of boost there. This, in turn, by doing so, would continue that, that trend of three pounds of boost ahead um, out to, sorry, I did this in the wrong cell. This would be 28 as well, and we would fill row values from here. Uh, this would continue our trend of three pounds of boost ahead during the entire curve, or three pounds of dome pressure, not boost. And if I say it by accident, I don't mean to, dome pressure does not equal boost, okay? So we race with dome pressure. Uh, if you are not using onboard air or CO2 uh, and you're serious about your drag racing program, you just tell me you're not serious about your drag racing program because you need dome pressure. Uh, you, you can apply a heck of a lot more dome pressure on top of the wastegate than you can your the compressor from your turbo uh, putting in, okay? You'll always have the ability to put more dome pressure on it with the CO2 tank or with onboard air. Some cars that... uh. You know, and, and even this car, you know, when when I uh, start really leaning on this car and we have some more laps on it and uh, and, and my buddy who drives it for me uh, is more comfortable with the car, uh, the boost curve for this car is going to look something along the lines of 0.8 in and we're going to be, you know, 55 pounds of dome pressure in. This we're going to be leaving on probably 17 at the release of the button. And that's about what the the boost curve is going to end up looking like when we really start to get after this this combination. But again, this is a second full pass on a car, so this is really a good, uh, and the reason I'm doing these is because I feel like this is a good spot for a lot of you guys to pick up and and learn, you know, kind of what you should be looking for and what you should be trying to achieve um, with your combination as you're tuning it. So with that said, we just fat fingered that. I do not want to send Jordan down the racetrack like that. So we're going to undo, 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 undo. There we go. So now we're back to where we just were. Um, again, one six, all the boost in by one six with 28 pounds of, of dome pressure. And uh, and now we can do a spot check like we just were, and we can carry this, this out here, right? So target's 18.7. Now we're in the 21 you know, 21 and a half, uh, almost 22 pounds of boost target. So that's a, a quick way of, of doing this. And the more time you have uh, doing this and tinkering with this, the faster you're going to be, more proficient you're going to be. I may come across as if I'm very proficient with this, but it's only from doing this for like a very long time. You, The only way you get very proficient with anything is to do it over and over again. Uh, it's just like your job at, at, at work. The day one, you're probably scared to death and you sucked at your job and you were afraid you were going to get fired by the first year in. You were, you know, the guy who everybody turned to to look for, uh, for help with. So stick to what you're doing. Stick to your combination and don't just throw parts at a combination. Don't just throw money at a combination. If you continue to chip away at it and continue to work on it, you'll continue to do better and better. So there's always room for improvement. So that was my little preachy session. Uh, that's how we do, you know, split screen here. That's how we look at a boost curve. Uh, what else we got? We got, if you had a, uh, if you don't know that the car is going to make more boost on the starting line, uh, this is something that you can do. We can pull up right here. Right here. We grab timing, right? So this is how much timing we had in it on, this, on the starting line, right, to build boost. 
So, and when we started retarding timing. So we know that our advanced table, and I made a separate video on this, is pulling timing out and everything's working the way we want it to. And if we notice, wherever we put the timing back in, like right here, is where the timing checks off or where the boost just checks off and sits flat and does exactly what you want it to do and stay there. So we can go over here to our advanced table, 1D, timing offset. This is our boost builder. And wherever we put the timing back in it, bump it up, right? So this, maybe we want to try to leave on 12 pounds of boost. Change that to 12, this one to 12.1. And now we've got a, uh, you know, a, a timing retard that goes deeper in a boost. We know that at eight pounds of boost, the engine was happy coming up to the uh, coming up to the chip and it made boost fine, but we're just going to keep the timing out of it a little bit longer till we reach 12 pounds of boost, and then we're going to jam it back in at 12.1, which should should um, you know calm the turbo down and let it just lay right over where it's supposed to be and leave on the amount of boost that you want to leave on. So again, that's something that you should be doing at home and not at the racetrack. You should be you should take a little notebook and figure out exactly what it takes for, uh, you know, this X RPM, the X dome pressure, and this much timing will make this much boost. The more notation you have of that, the better off and the more successful you'll be when you're at the racetrack. So uh, let's see what else we got. Um, we can always, and again, there's some health things that you always want to check in between rounds for the engine. So make a uh, make an engine health tab right? And, and look over your, um, you know, all the stuff that you really care about when it comes to the, the health of the engine. Uh, some of you guys have got like stock block LS stuff. Uh, you're going to want to, you know, pay attention to oil pressure, pay attention to pan vac, uh, pay attention to coolant pressure if you use coolant. Um, there's, there's stuff that you're going to want to watch because you could eventually hurt that thing. Um, you know, small block Ford, you have to look at it as much. I mean, they're you know it's a man engine, so it, you know it'll take a little bit more abuse than that 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 uh, that LS. But either way, all this data is good. It doesn't necessarily have to be looked at at every single pass, right? Um, so, uh, with that said, hopefully this covers some quick in between round uh, changes and how to use the comparison function in a data log and what you're what you're looking at here. Uh, and, and again, if you compare multiple data logs, you'll start to see a trend and the better you are at naming those data logs, what they actually are and what run they're from, the better off you'll be, uh, to gain the knowledge on what it takes to go round after round after round and making more and more laps and being successful with it. So, uh, hopefully this, this little, uh, video helped you out. Um, and if you got any questions, um, hit us up. And if you want to buy anything, we are Holly dealers. We are Davis technology dealers. We are uh, Cameron torque converter service dealers. We are forced induction turbo dealers. We are uh, dealers for some others. Uh, MSD, race pack, everything that Holly owns. We're direct with Holly, but we're, we're whatever. We're dealing for a whole bunch of different stuff. If you need something, we also sell uh, wiring material, supplies, uh, you know, tooling, not too much on tooling, but we can at least guide you in the right direction. Uh, so let us know. See you.